What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. Um, you know, this off season has been uglier than usual. I don't know that I've ever seen an off season this pissed off of Cowboy fans. You know, we've all been disappointed over and over again, but truly this year it's, it's, it's something, something different than what I've ever seen. I mean, you know, you would think <laughs> Micah Parsons is actually getting the Dallas Cowboy quarterback treatment right now. I guess that's, <laughs> that's saying a lot because it is literally either you love Micah Parsons or you hate that guy and he's a bum. Get him out of here. It's just bad. But I actually want to um, bring in something that, that's good. You know, we did have some bright spots that you look forward to in the future. Our kicker was lights out, okay? We have finally found a kicker, okay? We, we don't have to deal with the money mahers and things like that anymore. We got Brandon Albury, who came out the box and was incredible. But that isn't even what I really wanted to talk about. What we really have to be happy about is Jake Ferguson. Not Jake from State Farm, but Jake Ferguson. Because we finally look like we have a true tight end for the first time since Jason Witten was a younger guy. Now, Jason Witten had some incredible numbers and in, in years and things. But the last few years, especially the year he came back from the Raiders, he was more of a shell of what he had been you know, early in his career. And it was basically... I hate to say this, but, you know, Jason Witten was never the fastest of players to begin with. But when you had, like, Amari Cooper and Michael Gallup when he was actually really able to get downfield and you had Zeke and stuff like that, you looked at that and said, if we have to pick our poison, let's get Jason Witten the ball because he's not going to break something. Zeke could have broken something back then. You know, Amari Cooper could have taken it to the house and so on. And so you looked at it and said, by default, let's leave that guy open and make him the one that gets the ball. But be that as it may, Jake Ferguson had an incredible season last year, um, starting out from where he was as a rookie, kind of overshadowed by Dalton Schultz, but came out and played really, really well. Uh, getting eight TDs, uh, over 800 yards. And you looked at this and say, this was just year number two with an offense that was a new offense for everybody. And you think about how poorly the offense played the first four or five games, especially first game, I believe him and uh, Hendershot basically dropped touchdown passes in there. So it still is a work in progress. Now, this is a little clip from um, NFL Total Access with Jake Ferguson, and I want to comment on it after this little clip because this is this is really huge. And this is Jake Ferguson. We you know we heard him on Micah Parsons' podcast literally talk about when he was drafted and Dak Prescott called him and he was drunk as could be and so on, welcoming the, him to the Cowboys. But listen in. Yeah, definitely. I think. The biggest one was my body just, you know, finally having a little time off and um, getting my body right, eating the right things. And, you know, with that little time, not letting my body go to waste, still, you know, getting the work in that needs to be done and then ultimately getting ready for the next season. Well, it worked uh, last season because your snap percentage went up 34%, but your production went up over three times in almost every important category. Uh, Jake, why was that? What did you do uh, to have all that success in 2023? I think the, one of the big focuses I had in the offseason last year was, you know, figuring out and learning to trust our scheme. So when I did get into, you know, the first game of the season, even preseason, I was locked in on our offense and, you know, what we were trying to do on every play. Um, the certain plays that I, I had that were in our offense, to, you know, get me open. And um, even the ones where, you know, I wasn't the first read, maybe the second or the third read, just knowing, hey, this is this is an opportunity. This part in the play, I might the ball this is when I need to be open and, you know, taking advantage of it. Uh, what role did conversations with Dak uh, play into that process, Jake? I think a lot of it became, you know, um, sort of routine after practice. Uh, you know, if we hit something in practice and maybe I don't connect or I don't catch the ball or, 
uh, hits off my fingers or, you know, I'm a, a yard too deep, a yard too shallow, getting with him after practice and, you know, just making sure we get it right, hitting those reps, making sure, okay, when we get here on Sunday, it's lights out. We don't even have to think about it. And when you sort of get that chemistry going and not only that on the field, but also just, you know, the brotherhood that you create with your teammates, that's also big. And I think that had a really big play in, you know, our chemistry this season and it's going to have a lot to do in the future as well. Yeah, he is um, definitely. And, and adding to that where I have over 800 yards in the ATDs, in the Packers game, which uh, you could say it was garbage time, I guess. But still, 10 receptions, 93 yards. Uh, 22 was the longest with three TD catches. So um, definitely becoming uh, that guy. One of the things that was interesting that he talked about was, and this is where we are now with college players, because, see, College players, they finished the bowl games, you know, a couple of weeks ago and all that. They have, of course, the East-West Shrine game and the Senior Bowl and, you know, those games. And right now, they're getting ready for the Combine. So they've been in practice because, you know, it's kind of like the SATs. You basically train for the test, and that's what player college players are doing. They're running the 40s. They're doing the shuttle runs. They're doing the, you know, they're, they're leaping and everything else to get ready for the combine. And then as soon as they finish with that, then it's going to be doing all your pro workouts and, you know, all the uh, different stuff like that to get ready for the draft. And then come April, you're drafted and immediately you're in OTAs. And so, you don't really get a break. And this is one of the reasons why sometimes college players seem like they hit a wall or they start off real slow because they haven't actually had a chance to catch their breath. And he mentioned that, you know, it was kind of like, finally, my body got a chance to rest and catch up and things. And of course, he's beginning to get his grown man body. The thing that's interesting about tight ends, and when you look at the best ones out there, it usually takes time for tight ends to really develop. And you look at Kelsey and Kittle, um, Dallas Goddard and, and things. Um, they're all older tight ends. And that's where, you know, Kyle Pitts is still, I think it's three years that he's in, um, two or three. Um, but he still had, there's still hope for that guy because usually it's about three or four years before tight ends really start making their damage. And so him being on the level that he is right now, is great news for the Cowboys. And as you look at the teams that are making it to the Super Bowls and late in the playoffs, one thing they have in common is, besides having great defense that doesn't get tired, is they have great tight ends that are possession guys that can block. And you think about Tom Brady always had a Gronk or a Gronk and an Aaron Hernandez. Or you think about Kelsey and Pat Mahomes. You think about Skittle Kittle with the 49ers. You think about Dallas Goddard um, with uh, the, the Eagles and things like that. And that's another one of those areas that we've been lacking that now all of a sudden it looks a little brighter. Now, if we can get Schoonmaker to come up, then that would really be helpful. But this is one of those other things that he chimed in on because of covid when the cowboy players were getting together and working out like they've done all off seasons every year they got a lot of flack because they were like oh you're not supposed to be meeting in groups and things like that if that's what forgive me when dak prescott built a 50 yard football field in his backyard so that way they could go to his house they could work out together without the ramifications of COVID and stuff. But what has become a off-season haven for the players um, is working out consistently with Dak and working in the timing. Now, you know, I, I know we haven't had the success in the playoffs. and Everybody wants to point to Dak Prescott solely. They don't want to look at the whole team and the lack of where the opposition is literally telling you your your defense didn't have linebackers. We knew exactly where to attack you. We knew. And when you see the fatal flaw of the Dallas Cowboys basically making their defense all pass rushers and not run stoppers, well, without linebackers, then that was the flaw that was the worst thing that you could do. You've got to be able to adjust to all different scenarios. You just couldn't. Be that as it may, it's a pretty big advantage when you have your players that are still in Dallas. 
they, most of them all live in Dallas, off season and everything. They're not, you know, like Green Bay Packers where Aaron Rodgers lived in California. As soon as the season's over, he's gone. He's not one to come back for OTAs. The guy, these guys are there, they're friends, they're teammates, and they hang out together and they work out together. And I think that's going to bode well for the team. And that's one of those things that when you have a Dak Prescott um, as your leader and quarterback who is that guy, getting those guys together and working out is huge. All right, good people, I hope you're having a great hump day, and I will talk to you guys later. Peace.